Hello there. I thought the idea was for Andrew Neil to interview the Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn last night, not his crash test interview dummy. Now, I hadn't actually planned on doing a video on Corbyn's totally awful appearance last night, as it is usually considered bad form to kick an old man when he's already down. However, that interview put the Labour leader under an electron microscope and what it unveiled was not pretty. Andrew Neil basically took his whole policy base apart line by line, brick by brick. And as for Corbyn's responses to questions on anti-Semitism in his party, well, that was a whole separate 10-minute car crash, or more accurately, motorway pile-up. And on Brexit, all Corbyn could do was keep repeating his policy without explaining how he could possibly stay neutral on the so-called credible deal he would supposedly be negotiating with the EU in merely three months. And then Neil demolished the whole tax base of Labour's spending plans by pointing out that it would just take a very few rich people to move out of the country and it would all turn to dust. As well as the fact that the lowest paid would also be hit with a bill for £400 more tax under his plans. And then we come to the WASPy women those campaigning for redress for the unjust way that women born in the 1950s have been treated during the equalisation of state pension ages. To do this would cost the taxpayer about £60 billion. When asked about this, Corbyn said we must pay for it, but he had no idea how. He kept talking about using non-existent reserves and issuing more government debt. He then had the gall to say that this should have been dealt with in previous government's budgets. So Andrew Neil had to point out that Labour had not factored it into their current manifesto commitments costings. So the message for me is that Corbyn jumped onto this issue for votes at the last moment, but hadn't earlier considered it important enough to factor into any future Labour budget. And we all know that if Corbyn's momentum-driven, hard-left Labour Party got into power, after a very short time there wouldn't be any money left for anything, let alone £60 billion for the Waspies. And just listening to the man on Defence of the Realm made you realise very quickly that a Labour defence of the UK would be as effective as a chocolate fireguard. But the most telling aspect of this whole exchange for me was the totally unconvincing way he answered any of the questions put to him. Absolutely no conviction there at all. And his grasp of the facts even in his own manifesto appeared to be wafer thin verging on the non-existent. He sounded like someone who'd just finished a book or two on the benefits of communism, concluded that we're our own worst enemy, then decided that we have to do the right thing, as he saw it, and hang the political and economic costs. This is not a UK Prime Minister in waiting. As a result of this terrible showing by their leader, messages have emerged from what are thought to be Labour activists, saying how truly horrific it was, and that they all had to rally round and defend Jeremy Corbyn by filling social media with messages pushing integrity, and policies, and vision, and WASPy, and sure Start and NHS, etc, etc. And they're instructed to totally ignore Brexit, and to not attack Andrew Neil or the Chief Rabbi. Push images and stories with positive message, they're told. But whatever they do, Jeremy Corbyn's ongoing plummet from grace was further accelerated by his performance last night. The best thing the Labour hierarchy could have done at the beginning of this election campaign was to take Jeremy Corbyn to an isolated island in the Shetlands and left him there with a dog and a few sheep. In fact, the same could be said for the Lib Dems with Joe Swinson, whose on-screen demeanour is like that of a Middle Ages physician recommending a steady course of leeches for a common cold. And after the patient dies, she would claim, we made some mistakes but that's a video for another day. 
Last night's evisceration of Jeremy Corbyn should have Boris Johnson sitting up and really taking notice. As when this, his turn comes, he will not be able to use his usual boisterous blend of humour, bluster and Latin phrases in answer to Andrew Neil's forensic questioning. It's also funny that, as I understand it, a date has not yet been set for that engagement. Anyway, what do you think of Jeremy Corbyn's performance last night? Please share and comment and thank you for watching. Please do like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. And thank you very much for watching.